Welcome back to Dad Deals. If you've watched my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Harbor Freight. I think they are a great place to get decent quality tools for an affordable price, and some of their tools I would even compare to the top brands. However, they can't all be winners, and that's what this video is about. These next products are things I've personally had a bad experience with, and I also outsourced some suggestions from the Harbor Freight subreddit. Before we get started, I do want to mention that Harbor Freight now usually has three tiers of each product, a good, better, and best brand. Most of the bad experiences obviously come from the lowest tier good brand, but to be fair, if you're shopping at Harbor Freight, you're probably looking for the best deal and that's usually the bottom tier brand. If you're shopping the best brands, you're usually not saving much from the name brands elsewhere unless you're using a coupon. Okay, without further ado, here are the top 10 things you should not buy at Harbor Freight. Up first is tape. Harbor Freight is known to have some insane deals on electrical tape, duct tape, and painter's tape. I've even been lured into buying them. Hey, when you can get a lifetime supply of electrical tape for five bucks, why not, right? But as others have pointed out, and I've unfortunately experienced, it's really not worth the hassle. Tape is usually an afterthought when you're working on a project and getting annoyed at the tape quality can add an extra frustration during a project that just isn't worth the few bucks in savings. Next up is disposable batteries. This is a good example of the three tiered system coming into play as I've actually heard really good things about their top of the line Thunderbolt batteries. But the lower tiered branded orange and yellow batteries are the ones usually on sale or for free and are pretty much junk. I have used them in one-off kids toys successfully, but for anything that you're hoping to last more than a few weeks, you're better off going with another brand or getting the top Thunderbolt brand only. At number three is consumables like drill bits and cutting discs. The Warrior drill bits in particular tend to snap under any pressure and the cutting discs are known to shatter. While I love the $10 Warrior angle grinders and multi-tools, you're probably better off buying more expensive discs and blades for it. The knock here is that the price difference between these and name brands just isn't worth it. At number four is anything that takes precise measurements. The knock on Harbor Freight tools is that they lack quality control, meaning that more of their products are defective or contain printing errors than most other brands. When it comes to measurement tools, those small defects may not be obvious and you could end up with mismeasured cuts after it's too late. If you're just needing a speed square for a straight edge or are able to check the calibration beforehand, you'll be fine, but most people aren't going to do that or don't want to worry about it. The next one surprised me as I didn't have much experience with them, but it's the Allen wrench and hex keys. This is probably similar to the drill bits where the metal being used is just not as strong as it needs to be. There are also complaints about the sizes being inaccurate and stripping out bolts. Keep in mind that like the batteries, this does not apply to their top icon brand, which is excellent. This is just referring to the cheaper Pittsburgh branded sets. Along the same topic are the cheap Pittsburgh ratchets. These tend to break after moderate to heavy use, so if you'll be rarely using it and just need a cheap ratchet set, this would be fine. But if you're building out a tool collection for life, ratchets and sockets will be a major part of that collection and you're much better off buying another brand or stepping up to the Icon brand that Harbor Freight sells. At number seven is sandpaper. I recently used some of the cheap sanding discs to refinish some furniture and I was using up discs after just a few passes. The price difference is just really not enough to justify the poor quality unless you're getting the clearance pricing that some of the Warrior discs have been at recently. I haven't tried the new Hercules discs, so if anyone has experience with those, let me know in the comments below, but hopefully those will last longer as they claim. Next up is anything name brand and not a Harbor Freight branded product. While not too overly priced, don't expect to get these for a great deal. Harbor Freight is banking on you being used to everything being cheap and picking up a can of WD-40 or Meguiar's Car Wax for full price. If you're getting it for convenience, go for it, but just know that you might be able to get those products cheaper at Walmart or elsewhere. One exception is during the everything under $10 or $20 coupon days. Just make sure these items aren't excluded, which they usually aren't. At number nine is clamps, particularly the cheap plastic ones that mimic the much more expensive Irwin grip clamps. 
In my experience with these clamps, they crack and break under too much pressure and are just flimsy and a pain to work with. The Irwin clamps can be very expensive, but there's a good reason for that. I've had mine for many years and they still hold strong. The other metal clamps they sell at Harbor Freight can be good, but avoid the price temptation of these grip style clamps. Last up would be extended warranties. The tools at Harbor Freight are usually so competitively priced already that if they break down on you, it's better to just cut your losses. The costs and hassle of dealing with the extended warranties are usually just not worth it. If I'm buying something at Harbor Freight that I'm really worried about lasting a long time, I usually just go to another store and buy a different brand that will usually come with a better warranty at no additional cost. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I love Harbor Freight. Many of these items that I've had a bad experience with, I know others who've had good experience with and vice versa. The general rule is if you only need a tool for a one-off job or don't think you'll use it very much, then grab the best deal on the lowest tiers that you can. But if you think it's something you'll use a lot, wait for a coupon and splurge on the top tier brands. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time on Dad Deals.